In last week's video, I completed one of the most amazing days of flying of the entire trip, making a successful landing at Presidio, Texas. In this video, I head over into Mexico to visit Ojinaga. Ojinaga, a city of around 30,000, is located along the U.S.-Mexico border in the Mexican state of Chihuahua, where the Rio Conchos drains into the Rio Grande. The area was originally settled in 1200 A.D. by the ancestral Puebloans, also referred to as the Anasazi. This same group populated the Four Corners region in the United States, which I referred to earlier in this trip, parts of Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado. This group here in Ojinaga was later assimilated by Uto Aztecan speakers, and then, of course, by the Spanish. That first visit was in 1535. I'm at the airport in Presidio, Texas. It's right on the border, and right across the border in Mexico is Ojinaga. Uh, I have not yet been into Mexico on this trip, but this is total Podunkville there's like one hotel here it's actually really nice but it's not even in the town so I mean what's the what's the point in that I want to experience the border town here but there's a bunch of hotels in Mexico all right so I found a nice one I'm gonna stay there well maybe we'll see and um, but then there's the question of getting to the border how do you do that I called some numbers that are on the fridge here in the, uh, the pilot lounge or the F FBO. I don't know, it's not really an FBO, pilot lounge. Uh, first number, no one answered. Second number, a woman answered and she's speaking Spanish, which is fine, but she couldn't hear me, so I couldn't even ask her if that was a taxi. So then I just Googled taxi and some dude answered and started speaking Spanish and I asked if he was a taxi or if it was a taxi. And I don't know what he said, and then he hung up. So I'm going to take the courtesy car, and I'm going to see if I can park it at the border, at the customs, and then uh, walk over to the hotel. The hotel's not far from the border, so I could walk from there. It's like 15 or 20 minutes, I think, walking. Uh, so I'm going to try that. Let's see what happens. What's the worst that can happen? Alright, this uh, courtesy car is a complete piece of crap, but that's okay, it's free, and uh, I'm moving without having to walk, knock on wood, uh, so we'll see if I get to the border, we'll see if I can park this car there, and we'll see if I can get across the border and get to a hotel. GPS on my phone isn't even working out here. Nothing works. Nothing's uh, nothing's going as it should. So I'm gonna get into town. Welcome to Presidio. I'm gonna get into town, pull over, and uh, see if I can get the phone to give me directions. I better take a picture of the sign here. so I left the car right there uh, the border is like I don't know maybe a quarter mile that way so I'm gonna walk to the border and I'll see if I can cross over see if they'll let me in and hopefully the car will be there in one piece when I get back in a day or two so I wanted an adventure, so this is it. Let's see how it goes. All right, so I talked to a U.S. Border Patrol agent, really nice guy, and uh, he told me how to get across here. I didn't have to do anything on the American side yet, of course. Um, They just had me come over to this side of the street instead of the side that I was on. So, walking, 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 walking. I think he said it was like 100 yards, but more like, I don't know, half mile. So, walking, and then I'll 
talk to the Mexican Border Patrol when I get over there. And then I'll have to talk to the US Border Patrol as far as, you know, official stuff on the way back. So, yeah, it's warm. I said, I said, oh, it's, it's warm here. And he's like, or I said, probably not to you though. And he said, no, it's been like 120. So, yeah, this is comfortable to them after it's been so hot. All right, so this, I don't know if this is the Rio Grande or what. It must be, because that's the border, but it's dry. There's nothing here at all, so I don't know. So, yeah, border, that away. I'm almost halfway. Oh, there's the river. It's on the far side. So, you can see it in the distance there. Maybe. So there it is. See, so yeah, a cop went zipping by a minute ago. Then he went back. So there's another one up here. Not sure what's going on. This uh, border patrol dude is making funny noises and singing. There's the Rio Grande, the Great River, or Big River. I'm not sure what the best translation is. But the Mexicans call it Rio Bravo, which I guess would mean Brave River. Have a good day, sir. You too. Thank you. That's funny. That guy's singing over his loudspeaker. And he told me to have a good day, which is cool. Alrighty. Alright, this way said passenger cars only, but there's a sidewalk, so I'm gonna keep walking. Some guy asked where I was going, and I said, I need to pass through immigration, and he pointed this way. So, we will see. Nothing to declare. I don't know. The, the other side's for coming back, so it's the only place that I can imagine I'll be that, that would work. So let us see. All right. The genius inside the building where I went had me unpack every single thing. Hola, ¿cómo estás? So the, yeah, the genius in the building had me unpack every single thing in my bag. Like every piece of clothing. So it went through his scanner. He scanned it. Plastic surgery. If you get plastic surgery, you'll look like that. Well, probably not. Anyway, he asked about my cameras. He said, how many cameras do you have? Uh, so I kind of explained away all the action cams, which truthfully, I'm not gonna use here anyway, They're for the airplane. So I got out of that, explained away all the cables and chargers to recharge the batteries for the cameras. Hard drives, laptop, to get the video off the cameras. So I thought that was gonna be a problem, but Got around all that, and uh, yes, yeah, so there's a computer in there. I took the computer out, took the iPad out, showed him the software for my flying on the iPad, and he's like, "What else? What else? Is there more? What else?" I took like every effing piece of clothing, 20 pairs of socks, a dozen T-shirts, three pairs of shorts, a pair of pants, everything, every last thing I took out of the bag even after he'd scanned it on his x-ray machine. Yeah, so that guy's a genius. I don't know if he's trying to impress somebody or, I don't know, total waste of my time. 
and his. He's like, okay, fine. Didn't even look, didn't ask for my passport. Didn't give me a stamp, nothing. So I think this is my street. There's the main street. And my hotel's down this way. Well, not really my hotel because I didn't really reserve it yet. I just asked the guy if he had rooms. Uh, anyway, so, and then there was a kid after that guy's like, okay, go. There was a kid after that who had some hand sanitizer and he squirted three squirts in my hand and I rubbed my hands and then he took my temperature with a thermometer. I'm pretty sure I have a temperature because it's freaking hot here. So he took my temperature and then he's like, oh, you're good. So sweet, I don't have coronavirus. It's good to know. And uh, yeah, so here we go. We're getting to the hotel. Should be there very shortly. It's not very far away at all. I should probably look at the directions to make sure that it's not very far away. I'm thirsty. See, so yeah, this is my turn here. Although I have to admit, I didn't, I didn't really anticipate it being a dirt road. You know what? If the room has air conditioning and Wi-Fi and electricity, TV would be nice. Then I will be totally happy. What is this telling me here? Tell me two minutes. So maybe the sign that says hotel in giant letters. That could be it. Yeah, oh, and I want a cold Coke. All right, if all that comes together, I will be super happy. Avenue Zaragoza, Zaragoza. So yeah, this is an avenue. That's gotta be it. Although the pictures made it look fancier. We'll see. Turn left onto Oscar Flores. There's no Oscar Flores, this is Calle Siete A. There's a hotel right there. Uh, it says turn left. This looks like a nice place, whatever it is. Hey, this is it right here. Sweet, okay. So it is as nice as the pictures make it out to be. Sweet. Turn off the phone. Oh, Las Palmas Sweets. Okay, this looks nice. I think he said, I'm so rusty, but I think he said it was like 50 something bucks or maybe 60 bucks, which is a good deal. Oh, it's hot. Las Palmas. Oh. Okay, it's locked. Crap. Uh. So let's see if this guy has a has a room. Está abierto? Está abierto la hotel? El hotel? Yeah. Sí. Uh, pero uh, no puedo entrar. Pero para mí quiere entrar. Hmm? Para mí quiere entrar. Uh, para para un cuarto. Usted es el que me habló. Hmm? Usted me habló por teléfono ahorita. Sí, hace como dos horas. Sí. Del aeropuerto. Sí. Sí. Uh, ¿Hablé contigo? Sí, conmigo. Ok, ¿no? ok. Ah, bueno. ¿Y hay un cuarto? ¿Hay sí. un cuarto? Ah, bueno. ¿Por dos noches? Sí. Bueno. Uf, hace calor. Ah. Sí. 
Oh. Well, a mí hace calor. A ti, uh, oí que es más fresco ahora que antes. Sí, la verdad. Está un poco más fresco. Oh, no, ok. A mí hace calor. Oh. Está pendiente la 1 y la 3. Esas las 4 están. Okay, so yeah, my Spanish is rusty. So this is 150 bucks. It's for a suite. And uh, yeah, that's just way more than I should, I'm gonna pay, but he's gonna take me to another hotel, or not another one, but a hotel. This isn't really a hotel. Muchisimas gracias. Okay, that guy's totally awesome. He brought me to a hotel that's not too far away. Hola, como estas? Tienes un cuarto? ¿Cómo? Un poco más despacio, por favor. Hola, identificación. Ah, bueno. Eso. Oh, ¿quieres pasaporte? ¿Prefieres pasaporte? No, está bien. Okay. Okay, those people were just staring at me really weirdly. Came okay, room 127, I don't know what that's there for. Okay, I think I just got the gringo price, but, ah, Shasta. Fuck. Okay, gracias. That dude is bizarre and just staring at me. And there are mats on the floor that were filled with water that I tripped on and kicked water around when I went in there. Okay, there's 126 right ahead. Yeah, I think I get the Gringo price. I think she said 90 bucks a night. At this point though, I don't care. I really don't, because I'm melting and I'm really thirsty. And so, I just want my room. Oh, and there's housekeeping. Housekeeping, I stay and watch. Hola, está listo, ese? Este está listo? Sí. Ok, bueno, gracias. Ah, sí, perfecto. Ok. That light didn't work. Ok, I am just. I'm beat. All I want is power to charge stuff and something to drink. Oh, good grief. All right, I'm done with this for now. weird. 
All right, I was wiped out when I got to my room, so I took a nap. And now I'm gonna go get some dinner. There's a place down here that's supposed to be okay. Just a couple blocks down on the right. So let's take a look. That's kind of weird. Hmm. So this is where I wanted to have dinner. I'm thinking they're closed. I think maybe this is the Mexican version of Greyhound. All right, I'm gonna go and try to claim my breakfast. I got a, just a little piece of paper that, a little ticket when I checked in that should give me breakfast. So I'm gonna do that, maybe see if I can get cup of ice for my coke because there's no fridge in the room so yeah but the room turns out to be real nice and it was only 57 bucks uh, the woman inside here just didn't do the conversion correctly to dollars for pesos I don't know where breakfast is supposed to be uh, maybe right here all right let's see Let's see if this is the place. I'll go. I think I'm going to go uh, pay for another night and then I'll see if I can get some breakfast here. All right, so the gal the gal came out and asked me what I wanted. Oh, we got orange juice here. Awesome. Mm. Hola. Gracias. Wow. That's so good. Kind of tastes like it's fresh squeezed, actually. So she's got fried potatoes and she said coffee, but I asked if they had orange juice, and she said yes. Uh, I don't. Oh, she just asked if I wanted fruit. I said yes. So pretty much, I think she's going to bring me the whole works. Um, I didn't understand exactly everything, but anyway. Awesome. Okay, so this is sweet. A bowl of fruit and some granola and yogurt. Totally awesome. And I'm just getting started here. Mm. Excellent. And the main course here. And she's going to bring out bread as well. So, got the whole nine yards here. Very nice breakfast. Alright, so I just walked over and paid for another night, which was super quick and easy. And she said I didn't even need a ticket for breakfast tomorrow, so no big deal. So, I know who I am now. Um, and maybe I misunderstood about the bread. Um, I've been sitting here a while and no bread. I thought maybe they were baking it, but they haven't brought it, so I don't know. Uh, you know, ask for a cup of ice for my Coke, which is warm now, because there's no fridge in the room. Anywho, very, very nice breakfast. Uh, refried beans, fried potatoes, which were very, very flavorful, and had some different vegetables, and nice spice, and uh, ham and eggs. So, very nice. So, I've been a bum in my room all day. Well, not really a bum. I wrote a blog post that took a couple hours, posted that, uploaded photos, uh, 
and then took a nap and I was a bum a little bit. But anyway, I'm out now. I'm gonna walk around a little bit here in Ojinaga, Mexico. It's right across the border from Presidio, Texas. And it's an oven out here. Yeah, it's, it's hot. I think it's in the 90s right now. Um, so to me, that's pretty warm. Uh, I think it's been in the, like 120 recently. So people, locals have said that it's not too bad right now. But for this Washingtonian, 90s is a little bit warm. So anyway, I'm gonna bum around a little bit. So specifically, What I'm gonna do is walk to a cemetery, which just looked interesting to me. And yeah, it gives me a destination and I'll see things along the way. And then after that, I found a restaurant that I'm gonna go to and check out. I had good ratings, we'll see if it's open and if, if it exists. Because it seems like uh, some of them that are supposed to exist don't. Or Google Maps is not accurate or they're closed. A lot of restaurants seem closed. So that'll be my second destination. And then after that, back to the hotel. So it seems like a lot of the streets down here are gravel. Just sort of randomly. Well, obviously not randomly. Just the non-main streets are going to be gravel. The main ones won't be. Stores are in all kinds of random locations too. So this seems like uh, it's definitely off the beaten path. But there's a store on the corner selling shirts. Definitely a little bit of random there. So yeah, that's sort of interesting. I just walked down this and it looks like relatively new concrete. And then I come to this intersection, and we got gravel, gravel, gravel. Not the best part of town, but you look at that house, and that actually looks really nice. So, interesting. So, yeah, I didn't expect that I'd be on quite so many backwaters here. It's a little more rustic walk than I was expecting, but the truth is this kind of stuff is what's cool about visiting places like this. Man, there's a few really nice houses yet you see I mean like nice to me even I'm not just being nice I'm not being generous but a couple of sweet houses I've seen I mean that's nicer than my home in the states and tons of homes in the states want to go down a rabbit hole the Battle of Ojinaga, fought in 1914, was one of the battles of the Mexican Revolution. 
The revolution took place from 1910 to 1920 and was a conflict that took place between revolutionary groups and the Mexican government. A bandit, and later a general, Pancho Villa, whose name you will almost certainly recognize, fought for the rebels and on the side of the Mexican government. The United States supported the rebels and the Mexican government. I gotta admit, this cracks me up. The Mexican Revolution was obviously a long and complicated bit of Mexico's history. Sounds like it might be fun to study. For the sake of this video, however, just know that Senor Villa was here at the Battle of Ojinaga. By the way, in case you were wondering, he was fighting on the side of the revolutionaries at the time. So I made it to La Promesa, so I'm having dinner. And these are my tacos. And uh, bon appetit, got my Mexican coat. And there's an old guy looking at me like I'm a weirdo. Which to him I'm sure I am. Alright, just had another really nice breakfast at Waru Hotel. And uh one of the end. And uh, now I'm heading back to the border. Got my room cleaned out. Had a real nice stay there at Waru Hotel. It's right on the main drag, like a quarter mile from the border. So if you walk over, just walk straight down the main street. And it's on your left. It's a nice place. And I recommend it for anyone who's bumming over here and wants a place to stay. It's not the cheapest. I'm sure it's not the cheapest place you could find, but it's fine. It's about what you'd pay for a, a decent hotel in the US, 60 bucks or so. So you can see the border crossing right up ahead there. The aforementioned Conchos River flows through a beautiful canyon called the Pegas Canyon, and although I had hoped to visit it, I didn't manage to squeeze it in. If you're in the area, however, definitely put it on your to-do list as it looks stunning and is just about a half hour south of Ojinaga. All right, so coming back this way, so far it's been much easier. Well, but then again, it was easy going the other way until I got to the official check. So this way the Mexicans waved me through a little bit here, like two or three people at different spots, just this way. And then uh, a guy charged me five pesos. I think it's just not immigration, but a bridge crossing fee. That was 25 cents. Paid that guy 25 cents just to walk over the bridge, I think. And then just now, US immigration was mid span there. So, right over the Rio Grande to us Americans, Rio Bravo, if you're a Mexican, that's what they call the river. So, some US immigration guys were there, and one of them was like, hey, check this guy. So, one guy asked for my documentation. I gave him my passport, and I said, this isn't the official checkpoint is it? He said, no, it's not official. Not the official one. Or the, not the formal one. So, just a preemptive check. And up ahead here is the official one. The cars are lining up here for the actual check with U.S. what are they called now? Customs and Border Protection? Or Immigration and Border Protection? I don't know. So that's up ahead. So we'll see how that goes. The car is there, next to the car that was there before. And it appears to still have all its windows. I'm happy. Woohoo! All right, back to the airport. Totally awesome. Come back next week when I depart Presidio and fly to the Class C airport in El Paso, finishing my flying along the Rio Grande and the Texas-Mexico border.